Hi, my name is Veronica Carullo, and I'm the Director of Pediatric Pain Management at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Today, we're going to be talking about ascending and descending control of pain. This is part one of a two-part series, and in this part, we'll be discussing nociception and pain pathways. I have no financial relationships or conflicts of interest to disclose. And after this session, you should be able to differentiate between nociception and pain, describe how nociceptive signals are processed by the central nervous system by excitatory and inhibitory neural circuitry, describe the major pain subtypes, and understand the concepts of peripheral and central sensitization. So these are the two big definitions when we uh, talk about pain versus nociception. The International Association for the Study of Pain recently revised its definition of pain. And now that definition is, pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage. And nociception is the sensory nervous system's process of encoding noxious stimuli. This infographic underscores the advances in our understanding of pain after many years of neuroscientific research. The IASP panel felt that due to these advances, a reevaluation of the definition of pain was warranted. This new definition was meant to better convey the nuances and complexity of pain. The hope is that it will lead to improved assessment and management of those who experience pain. The concept of the pain pathway has been around since the 1660s when Rene Descartes, a French scientist and philosopher, was the first to ever suggest that pain came from the brain. His study focused on phantom limb pain, and since there was no limb to actually feel pain, he concluded that pain must come from the brain. In his Treatise of Man, which was published posthumously in 1664, he theorized that the body was more similar to a machine and that pain was a disturbance that passed down along nerve fibers until the disturbance reached the brain. This theory transformed the perception of pain from a spiritual experience to a physical mechanical sensation. This marked the beginning of research in pain. Scientists believed that by locating pain fibers within the body, a cure would follow. Research and clinical observations have enabled us to understand the various steps and intricacies in more detail. Yet 350 plus years later, there still remains a lot to be learned. The diagram on the right illustrates our current understanding of nociception, which we will discuss in further detail during this session. The pain system is analogous to other sensory systems like visual and auditory pathways. Specialized nerve endings or nociceptors attached to axons, A delta or C fibers, which project to spinal cord or brainstem nuclei. Nociceptive information is distributed to the anterolateral system and postsynaptic dorsal column fibers via a first order neuron and then transmitted to the brainstem and somatosensory cortex via second and third order neurons. As we said earlier, nociception is the sensory nervous system's process of encoding noxious or painful stimuli. Pain begins at nociceptors, which are cutaneous receptors that are specialized to detect noxious stimuli like extreme pressure, very hot or cold temperatures, or tissue damage. When activated, nociceptors send a signal to the spinal cord and then to the brain. Different nociceptors detect different types of pain. Peripheral nerves include medium to large diameter myelinated afferent fibers and small diameter unmyelinated afferent fibers. The conduction velocity is directly related to the fiber diameter, which is highlighted in the compound action potential recording from a peripheral nerve on the diagrams on the right. Most nociceptors are either A or C fibers. A alpha, A beta, and A-delta nerve fibers are insulated with a protective covering called the myelin sheath. This helps with nerve conductivity. C nerve fibers are unmyelinated. Their different conduction velocities account for the first 
which is the fast pain response, and the second, which is the slow pain response to injury. A delta and C fibers are the main fibers responsible for the transmission of pain. However, new studies suggest that A beta fibers may also have an important role to play in the diagnosis and treatment of pain. This is a summary of how fast and slow pain is transmitted via the A delta nerve fibers and the C nerve fibers. Fast pain is felt at about 0.1 seconds after a pain stimulus is applied. A delta fibers detect pinprick, cutting, or burning of skin caused by mechanical or thermo stimuli. This fast, sharp pain is not felt in most deeper tissues. The neurotransmitter released is glutamate. The slow pain response begins after one second or more and may range from seconds to minutes. C fibers detect slow, burning, aching, throbbing, nauseous, and chronic pain. This is associated with tissue destruction and is caused mainly by chemical stimuli such as substance P. So let's discuss the ascending pathways of pain. Now moving on to the descending pain pathway. Evidence for pain modulatory mechanisms were first recorded by Dr. Henry Beecher. Dr. Beecher was a physician who served in the US Army during World War II. During his service, he observed as many as three quarters of badly wounded soldiers who reported none to only moderate pain and did not require any pain relief medication. According to his report, these men were all alert and responsive and the injuries were not trivial. They included compound fractures and penetrating wounds. This led him to the conclusion that strong emotions have the ability to block pain. This clearly opposes the classic Cartesian view where pain was considered to be a hardwired system that passively transmitted noxious inputs to the brain. It is now generally accepted that the experience of pain does not solely rely on noxious inputs, but many variables interplay with the experience, including memory, mood, environment, attention, and expectation. Descending pain modulation involves multiple brain sites and pathways ranging from the cerebral cortex to the caudal medulla. The most well-characterized pathway involves a circuitry linking the midbrain periaqueductal gray matter, rostral ventromedial medulla, and the spinal cord. A plethora of transmitters are involved in descending pain control, including opioid peptides and monoamines. The firing profiles of different pain modulatory neurons suggest that spinal nociceptive processing is subject to bidirectional control from supraspinal sites. The descending circuitry exhibits dynamic plasticity in response to persistent pain conditions. Descending pathways can be activated to achieve pain relief through electrical stimulation, pharmacological intervention, and psychological manipulations. Pain sensation is modulated by a variety of neurotransmitters or neurochemicals that are either excitatory, meaning that they initiate pain, or inhibitory, meaning that they inhibit or stop pain. Some of the Excitatory neurotransmitters include glutamate, substance P, bradykinin, and prostaglandins. Some of the inhibitory neurotransmitters include serotonin, endorphins, and kephalins, and dynorphin. Nociception, as we have discussed over the last about 10 minutes, involves four processes. Transduction, transmission, modulation, and perception. Transduction is the process by which a stimulus like an injury activates nerve endings. Mechanical heat or chemical stimuli can activate pain receptors in peripheral tissues. These pain stimuli are then converted into electrical energy known as transduction. Transmission occurs next. The nociceptive message is transmitted to the central nervous system via A-delta fibers and C-fibers. 
A-delta fibers send sharp, localized, and distinct sensations, while C fibers relay impulses that are poorly localized, burning, and persistent. This is the process by which the CNS is informed of impending or actual tissue damage. Modulation is the process by which the body tries to naturally inhibit pain. Inhibitory neurotransmitters, like endogenous opioids, work to hinder pain transmission. Perception is the awareness of pain which occurs when the somatosensory cortex receives the nociceptive information via the third order neuron and identifies the location and intensity of the pain. Pain is then the complex reaction to this process, which is physiological, behavioral, and emotional. So we come back to the International Association for the Study of Pain's definition of pain, which is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Hopefully now you have a better framework to understand why pain is a biopsychosocial experience that goes well beyond mere nociception. Typically, pain is classified into three subtypes, nociceptive pain, neuropathic pain, and nociplastic pain. Nociceptive pain is the most common type of pain. It occurs as a normal response to an injury of tissues. The most common examples include strains, sprains from trauma, fractures, or pain from uh, operations. Neuropathic pain is caused by a primary lesion or disease in the somatosensory nervous system, causing varying degrees of pain sensations in the peripheral or central nervous systems. Patients usually present with a variety of symptoms from numbness to burning to stinging. This type of pain is usually chronic and persists for months. Some examples of neuropathic pain include diabetic peripheral neuropathy, post-herpetic neuralgia, HIV-related polyneuropathy, multiple sclerosis, or migraine headaches. Nociplastic pain is non-nociceptive and non-neuropathic. It occurs secondary to an inflammatory process which results in activation and sensitization of nociceptive pain pathways. This results in abnormal processing in the central nervous system and usually results in chronic pain. Examples of nociplastic pain include fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, and chronic fatigue syndrome. There are also mixed pain subtypes which share common clinical characteristics of all three types of pain, nociceptive, neuropathic, and nociplastic. Some examples of this include cancer pain, or chronic pain resulting from lumbar spinal stenosis or sciatica. In states of chronic pain, particularly in the context of inflammation and cancer, nociceptive and non-nociceptive sensory afferents are sensitized. Peripheral sensitization represents a reduction in the threshold and or an increase in magnitude of responsiveness at the peripheral ends of sensory nerve fibers. This occurs in response to chemical mediators released by nociceptors and non-neuronal cells at the site of tissue injury or inflammation. The end result of peripheral sensitization is to generate more primary afferent nociceptor activities. And when this information reaches the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, the pain sensation is enhanced, even with the strength of the stimulus remaining unchanged. Central sensitization is the repetitive stimulation of the nociceptors that causes amplification in the nociceptive information, leading to the excitability of the projection neurons within the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. The dorsal horn of the spinal cord usually responds to low intensity of stimuli. When the action potential reaches the presynaptic terminal, there are neurotransmitters released from the afferent terminal to produce excitatory effects. With the induction of central sensitization in somatosensory pathways, with increases in synaptic efficacy and reductions in inhibition, 
a central amplification occurs, enhancing the pain response to noxious stimuli. The primary mechanism for central sensitization comes from the neuroplastic changes which occur in the nervous system. The outcome of these changes is hyperalgesia and allodynia. Hyperalgesia is increased pain from a stimulus that normally provokes pain. Allodynia is pain due to a stimulus that does not normally produce pain. So in summary, nociception involves a series of processes, transduction, transmission, modulation, and perception, or interactions between peripheral nerves and the central nervous system. Pain is a complex biopsychosocial phenomenon that arises from the interaction of multiple neuroanatomic and neurochemical systems with a number of cognitive and affective processes. Pain, whether it is linked with injured tissue, inflammation, or functional impairment, is mediated by processing in the nervous system. Regardless of its source, pain is associated with a variety of, of emotional reactions and behaviors. Thus, pain is fundamentally a psychophysiological phenomenon. This concludes part one of ascending and descending control of pain. I look forward to our next module together. Thank you.